Welcome back everybody. Now today is my update number 25 where I go back to 10 past products in order and give you a quick recap of how those reviews went and let you know if I'm still used them and if not, why I haven't still used them. So without further delay, let's get right to update number 25. For number 241, it was a collection of potato peelers. Let's see some clips from my original potato peeler review. All right, well, this is a uh, pretty standard. I don't see anything particularly wrong with this one. For one buck, I've had a lot worse. It does work going this, this way, but I feel like I'm gonna cut myself. Well, this one's way sharper. Even the Betty Crocker was good, but this one's way better. Yet another one I've had requests for is the Titan Peeler. This was also advertised as well. This was 20 bucks. Whoa. Wow. This thing is like cutting through butter. This is amazing. No instructions at all. I think you're supposed to do this under running water. Not good. Not really nothing. All right, well, this, uh, this feels kind of like a standard potato peeler. Honestly, I'm not sure it's much better than the Betty Crocker, which is $1. Oh, it's only getting half of it. Oh, oh no. There we go. This is going to be perfect. It looks like one of those high-rise condos in Dubai or something. And uh, let's just try it. Whoa! Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. I just think this is a great product and I'm going to be leaving this one out in my kitchen for future potato peeling sessions by me. All right, so in the years since then, I haven't peeled a lot of potatoes, but when I do, I do like the Rotato Express. I guess there's a little bit of a novelty factor to it as well. It's kind of fun. It may not be better than doing it by hand, but there is certainly something satisfying about watching it peel itself. So to me, the Rotato Express still holds up after a year of use. My 242nd product review was actually a collection of optical illusion gadgets. Let's first take a look at how that video went. All right, let's try this hologram projector. Very high tech. You're going to search for a hologram video on your phone and notice there's an X right there. That is where you place this device. I'm placing it right in the middle of the X. It's pretty cool. It's kind of holographic. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool. It's just I wish it was a lot bigger. Next up, we've got a USB clock fan. All right, it's plugged in. Let's try the on off switch and but you can see how it looks like a static fan and you can even see this the second hand moving around the clock itself. I'll just uh, sit here on my computer and uh, with a nice breeze as I'm looking at the time staring me right in the face. This is the demo. It looks pretty good, right? Looks like it's floating right there in my living room, but it's just a fan that's spinning with LED lights. Now, when I tried mine, you'll see how they look. Not quite as good. This is the video of myself. It, it does actually fix itself. There I am. There I am floating in my living room. Very cool. It's kind of a loud fan. And here's the funny thing. I don't feel any breeze from this fan at all. This is the Euler's disc. Three different magnetic faces you can place on there. Whoa, it's still going. Oh, optical illusion desk spinner. All right, that's pretty cool. It kind of looks like almost like water rippling off of there. You can spin either direction, so you can have the lines look like they're moving up or look like they're moving down. Which one would you pick? I know which one I would pick. So those were not the kind of items that I'm going to use on a regular basis. I do say I pull out the disc once in a while to show people because it's kind of a cool novelty item. Same with the spinner as well. But fan back there, it was so touchy. It was so hard to use. I ended up just taking it down. It wasn't really worth the effort. But they're all pretty fun to use, but not kind of things that are going to get used very regularly. Number 243 was the collection of Dream Farm products. Dream Farm creates a series of unusual kitchen gadgets. Let's see some clips from my original Dream Farm video. Garject, Klongs, Sapoon, Smood, Lavoons. Load it up. And squeeze. And there's supposed to be a click that uh, it worked. Oh, it worked. It worked. Whoa. It still takes some effort to press it. 
So it has this ridge here that allows you, say you got to go do something real quick. You, if you got food that's dripping, you can place it like that and the food will drip back in there and your food will not get on the counter and the germs in your counter will not get on your food. That's closed. That's open. Which is the sit-up scraping spoon. It's got a tip here that has a flat end to it. It has a built-in measuring cup. Well, I guess with the flat tip you can scrape better. All right, well, once again, the handle does keep it off there. These are Lavoons, which stands for Scrape Level Measuring Spoons. And then when you bring it out, you got a nice level scoop. Oh, that's a beautiful, look at that, perfectly level. Very nice. All right, so these are some items I actually use quite a bit. Of those in that collection, I use the Sapoon quite often. The Klongs actually become my go-to tongs and I use the Lavoons almost on a daily basis. So despite the weird names, despite the kind of novelty features, I actually find them quite useful and I think the Dream Farm products have worked quite well. Number 244 is Socket Shelf, which is an as seen on TV shelf that gives you some extra outlet space and a couple of USB ports. I did this with a couple of others, but this is the one that was advertised on television. This is the one that I actually like the best. First up, let's take a look at a few clips from the original Socket Shelf review. This is Socket Shelf. It's an as seen on TV eight port surge protector. It has six outlets, two USB connectors, and a shelf. Even if I could get it to fit this way, which it doesn't, you're gonna have a shelf right underneath there. That's not gonna work. I'm not, I'm not sure about this. I, I guess it's I guess it's kind of sturdy. So I'm charging my phone. That's cool. It's a it's on the shelf up here. If I wanted to view it, uh, that might be a little more problematic. But not only do I have better space optimized, but I still have four more outlets. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Shaving gel, miscellaneous, Q-tips, beard oil, more. I actually think I have more space. I think the socket shelf with this wide design actually might be a little bit better. The As Seen on TV socket shelf comes out on top. So really over the past year, it's done what it's supposed to do. It offers quite a bit of power. I wish it actually had more USB slots in there, but otherwise it's worked well. I'm pretty happy with it. People have asked me when they've seen it, what it is. So the socket shelf to me is a pretty good product. My 245th product review was laundry balls. And this actually ranked as my worst of 2019 because not only did my test show they didn't really work better than, than regular water, didn't work as well as detergent, but there's been studies and consumer groups all over the world for decades that have said they don't work. Let's first take a look at how my original laundry ball video went. All the laundry balls work under the same principle where they say they have these beads in there that changes the pH of the water that allows you to clean your clothes without detergent. This is contestant number one. Next up from Amazon. It's roughly the same size. Get this thing in the wash ASAP. The instructions say to put both of them in there, both of them. It looks like the wine didn't come out hardly at all. The ketchup pretty good. It looks like a big old wine stain once again. The crystal wash, the two balls over here, the cheap one ball here, just warm water and Tide. 1995 Consumer Reports tested discs like this and said they perform no better than plain water. The FTC said that tests show that these gadgets do little more than clean out your wallet. So I say save your money on them, cheap or expensive, and just stick with detergent. And if your laundry isn't any of that dirty, just use regular water. So yeah, I have never, I have not used these since my original video because I'm sure that they don't work. So what's the point of using them? They've been in the boneyard where they're going to reside until they eventually get put in a landfill somewhere. Laundry balls don't work. Number 246 are the lighted Mighty Sight reading glasses. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. This is Mighty Sight, which is an LED magnifying eyewear as seen on TV. Oh, he's got the cyborg glasses on. To me, the Mighty Sight is just a new version of the Big Vision where they added LED lights. So if I hold it way back here, I, I see it's, it's blurry. And right here, it's in view, maybe about, a, about 12 inches, about a foot away from me. And it's better view and it's becoming less in focus. What do you guys think? How does that look? Stylish? It kind of barely fit over those. If they're a little bit wider, it would not have fit. Oh yeah, it is brighter. 
definitely brighter. I can read the whole thing. It's taking something that you can pretty much get anywhere for cheap and adding lights to it. And it's up to you to decide if those lights are worth the extra cost. I'll be honest, it took me a while to kind of warm up to these. I've got quite a few reading glasses as it is, so this didn't really find these working their way into my rotation for a while. You know, a pair of reading glasses like that, a pretty big gap between the nose bridge. Mighty Sight, there's really no nose bridge at all. They're not really the most stylistic reading glasses out there, but that's not what you're wearing them for. I think the Mighty Sight is actually a pretty good product. Next up was a comparison of food choppers from the Vince Offer Slap Chop of 2009 back to the 1950s with Ron Popeil and a modern OXO. Let's first take a look at how the original chopper comparison went. We've got a 1956 Ron Popeil food chopper, 2009 Slap Chop from Vince Offer, and a modern 2019 OXO food chopper. 1956 Chopomatic, 2009 Slap Chop. Not too bad, really. Let's see what Vince Offer can do for us here. Oh, wow. It's not going as well. All right, OXO. Oh, OXO is looking pretty good here. All right, comparing the three of them, we have Ronco on the right, Slap Chop, OXO. What do you think the OXO looks best, I think? So right here, we've got the OXO, the Ronco, and the Slap Chop. Pretty close, I think. Chopomatic, Slap Chop, OXO, which one do you guys think looks best? I know which one I think looks best. I think the OXO looks the best. Boom, now that came out really good. That's what I'm talking about. Based on these tests, I'd probably go with the OXO because it really handled the food very nicely. It's very solid. All right, so I left these out for a while. Nobody really used them. I didn't really use them. It's just not something that we found very useful, although it was really cool to use these, especially the 1950s model, to see it actually still working. But for me, the OXO is in the boneyard, and these two became display pieces where they're probably going to stay. I'm not really going to be using these very often, although they are pretty cool items. So number 248 was a collection of seven dumb items that work. My daughter helped me out with that video. We had a lot of fun with it. Uh, first, let's take a look at some of the clips from the original review. The Grill Sergeant. I got my cooking spray here. I've got a couple of utensils. I even got a soda. And there's... these are the Reef Sandals. And on the back of them, you've got a bottle opener. Oh, it worked. Who wants a bottle that was just next to the bottom of my flip-flop? Anybody? Anybody? Grass slippers. That's right. I guess I'm feeling it. It's, it's kind of strange. These are called fresh top caps. Oh, wait. Oh, it did work. Yes, I worked. Well, it didn't affect the taste. That's good. Oh, no. Oh, come on, man. So you're supposed to put the hot dog in there, roll it on the table, and then it scores it so the hot dog cooks better. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's working. Well, I think it did a pretty good job. It only took about two minutes. It's called Saucy, the condiment blaster. Yeah, that actually, that actually kind of worked. These are called the lazy readers. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Whoa, my hands are tiny. It's pointing straight ahead and I'm looking right at my phone. But you know what though? I'm surprised, that, like I'm reading this book right now. Now of all those items, I haven't really used a lot of them very much, but if I had to pick the one I've used the most, it would be these Reef flip flops. But the dumb feature of them, which is a bottle opener on the back side of them, these are great flip flops. But I, I, not once in the last year have I reached down to my foot and pulled this off and opened a bottle, no, no need. I, I don't wanna put, where I've been walking through outdoors stuff on top of a bottle and where I'm drinking from. So it's a dumb item. I don't, I don't use the dumb feature, but it's actually a pretty good flip flop. Product update number 249 was three different varieties of nano tape. Let's take a quick look at the original video. This is magic nano tape. It's supposedly reusable, washable, ultra sticky, but doesn't leave marks. Not just one roll, but I got three of them from different vendors to see if there's any difference at all and if any of them actually work. Wow. This held up, well, two bricks. The third one, not so much. There it goes. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! 
Yeah, I don't think I'll be re reusing any of these. In the video, they have a person throw a strip on the ground, step on it, and wash it off, but they don't show you what happened after they washed it off. It's supposed to be reusable. This is what they showed them doing. They were showing items like hand soap being hung up with these. There's no way that's gonna stay. Is that gonna stay? No way. Well, I'm going, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I think the nano tape did okay in some situations, certainly not as good as the video floating around shows. All right, so nano tape is not something that I've really found many uses for, but I did want to give you a quick update because I put three photos up on the wall back then. A year later, one of them still standing. Let's go check it out. So there it is. Daisy is still there after a year. Nano tape A. Definitely won that one. The others fell off. They were on this wall. I've left it for a year. I'm just going to leave it. We'll leave Daisy for another year. Now my 250th product review was a 1977 Ronco Auto Cup as seen on TV versus a modern Contigo. Now the Ronco did an admirable job, but it just doesn't compare to modern technology. The Contigo was clearly better. But here's some clips from my original Ronco versus Contigo review. This is the groovy new Ronco Auto Cup, brand new in 1977. And this is a Contigo Auto Seal travel mug purchased brand new in 2019. Which, Which one is better? Mine is. I put coffee in these uh, exactly four hours ago. Um, it's not cold. It's not warm either. Mmm. Mmm. That's, that's, that's hot coffee. There's a significant difference between the two of these. Let's see how spill proof they are first though. Oh, oh. Nothing. Oh, Ronco. Ronco is coming through with the spill proof cup. Look at this. 93 degrees. It's not much cooler than that outside. Look at the Contigo. 130. Yeah, that's a totally invalid test, man. Who's going to wait four hours to drink a cup of coffee? I know I wouldn't. Except let's try some cold water with these. Let's see how they look. Well, it's probably in the ice. It's pretty cold. Pretty impressive. Now for the 1970s. Come on. Disco era. Oh, it's a. Uh... It's basically room temperature. The 1977 Ronco Auto Cup can't really hang with a modern travel mug. So in the year since that video was posted, the Ronco has actually become a display piece in my kitchen. The Contigo's gotten used quite a bit, although it was recently replaced with the coldest water bottle, which I did in a review earlier this year. The coldest water bottle is my go-to insulated beverage holder. It was fun to do, and I really enjoyed doing these old Ronco products, but 1977 really can't compare with modern technology. So there you have it. If I had to look back at this group of 10 reviews and see which items I used the most, I'd say probably the Dream Farm and probably the Mighty Sight. Clearly the worst of that bunch of the laundry balls, the worst of 2019, one of the worst products ever. But if you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time.